Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at a sliding down message uh, on a button event. Now, this is useful for things like user settings. I've already outlined uh, a sort of mock up page here. The button will allow you to actually press a button and perform a, a specific action. For example, if we did have some fields around here, the button could then actually uh, go ahead and save some settings, perhaps to a database table, and would then go ahead and display this sliding message. So, for example, if I now click save, uh, you can see this sliding down message has appeared and then vanished uh, with the text, your settings have been saved. So it's an extremely useful thing to implement if you want a quick drop down to display, for example, change settings. Uh, obviously, uh, when we click this button, we can specify any text we want to be displayed. So we can use it as long as we've included it in our page. Uh, we've got notice.js here, which is the actual functionality, and buttons.js, which deals with the pressing of this input button. So without further ado, let's go on and take a look at how to create this. Okay, so we're starting afresh now. Um, I've got my uh, document just open here. Let's just take a look at some of the files that we'll be using. I've already mentioned we're using notice.js and this is the file that's gonna handle uh, the function or define the function that's gonna allow this drop down to happen. Then we've got buttons.js which is gonna look out for a button click uh, on a wide variety of buttons across your website. So you can include something like buttons.js to handle the clicking of buttons. Uh, for now, obviously we're only gonna be dealing with one or two buttons. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and set up our page. So I'm gonna uh, create some H, uh, header three tags and then a paragraph here. So I've given this, these header threes the uh, value of settings or the text of settings. Inside the paragraph, I'm just gonna write something like some user settings. And then I'm gonna go down and in another paragraph, uh, create an input button. So the input type is button. We'll give this a value and we'll just say save. And uh, the ID of this, we could just have a save. So this is the uh, button, uh, the name that we're going to use in the selector in buttons.js. Now inside of buttons.js we're going to need to go ahead and uh, perform an action when this particular button is clicked. So we're going to use a selector to select the save button and then we're going to create an event handler. Now inside this event handler we need a function. So I've just outlined a function here with some parentheses and then the curly brackets uh, within this is going to be what happens when we click the button. So for now, and just to test it, I'm gonna alert out clicked. So now what's gonna happen is because we've included this buttons.js file on our, on our page, the uh, event handler is gonna handle a click uh, based on this button here, this uh, entire button here. So when it's clicked, we're gonna perform a function, and that function is just to alert clicked to the, uh, to the user. So this is what our page looks like. When I click save, you can see that I get this alert dialog box saying clicked. So we know that the save button uh, has worked. Now inside um, our save button, once we've clicked it, we might want to uh, update user settings. Now the reason I've commented this out is this will be handled entirely by yourself uh, and you would perhaps uh, create some kind of Ajax call, some kind of HTTP request to update user settings. Um, obviously, if you're not creating a save button, then you would uh, perform some other action. However, after this, we're going to call um, the um, slider function. So I've called this uh, slider notice. We'll just call it slide notice. Oh, slide notice. So we're gonna call the slide notice function once we've created it. Uh, so when we actually click this button, um, the specific set of actions to do whatever you like are carried out. Then we call the slide notice button and we give it the text that we want to uh, display uh, when the slider appears down. So now that we've done that, we don't need to do much else here, but we are gonna replace this uh, once we've created notice.js. Now, before we work on notice.js and actually creating this function, we want to go ahead and style the div uh, the, that's at the top that's gonna to be hidden. So the first thing to do on index.php is to include a div at the top of every page that you want this slider to uh, slide down. And I'm just gonna call this slide notice. So we can reference this div with slide notice. We can use a selector in jQuery. 
So this div now appears uh, on anywhere on the page. You can place this div anywhere on the page, uh, and we're going to style it so it's hidden. Uh, but for now, we're going to style it so we know the exact um, style of it. So inside style.css, we're going to go ahead and reference slide notice, and we're going to uh, apply some properties to this to make it look uh, like a slider. Now, the first thing that we would usually do is display none. Uh, however, we're going to just comment that out for now because we actually want to show it so we can see it uh, and preview it. Now, the position is going to be absolute. Uh, and what this means is we can place it uh, w however we want on our page using the top, left, uh, right and bottom uh, options available to us. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and give this a height of 50 pixels. Now at the moment you won't be able to see anything, uh, it's completely uh, out of view. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set a background colour on this. And the background colour is going to be F0, F0, F0. It's almost like a, a light grey. So when we refresh, uh, we should have seen that. Let's just have a check where... Um, uh, let's just go and get rid of this here. Nope. Oh, okay, so we'll go ahead and put some text just in here. So I put some text inside slide notice, that was why it wasn't displaying. Uh, so now we can see this um, div start to appear. Obviously at the moment it's not looking great. Uh, we just have a little rectangle here with text inside of it and that overlap overlaps the rest of our page contents and that's very important. Uh, we've given it, for that reason, we've given it the position absolute. Now we've got the height set to 50, uh, however we need to go ahead and position it at the very top hand corner of our page. So I'm going to say top 0 and left 0. Now what this will do is it will position it in the top left hand corner. Let's just go ahead and preview that. You can see that's gone up to the top left hand corner. Now what we want to do is make the width equal to the 100% uh, of the document body. So we want to go ahead and set a width option, which is uh, 100, uh, sorry, percent. Uh, and now you'll see that appear across the top of the page. So now we've hidden, uh, we've sort of like, we can't see this settings uh, header that we created earlier. And that's important that it slides over the content and doesn't shift the rest of the content down. You'll notice if, if we had changed the position to relative, uh, you'll see that that doesn't really work uh, how we want it to. So that's the reason we set it to absolute. Okay, so on with uh, the rest of this styling, I'm going to set the text aligned to center. Uh, that just makes sure that the uh, alignment of the text is in the middle of this div. Uh, 